this week's lesson will be less than one hour long because the material is quite difficult. If you understand this material for the first time, then well done to you. This week we're going to be considering the linear system x prime is equal to ptx plus gt, where pt is a continuous matrix function and gt is a continuous vector function. And they're continuous on some open interval from alpha to beta. When we find the general solution to this equation, we can write it like this. We can write it as a linear combination of functions in a fundamental set of solutions. In other words, C1x1 plus C2x2 plus etc. plus Cnxn. And then we're going to be adding on an extra function, a particular solution. Think back to chapter three, the idea is the same. The function underlined in blue will be the solution to the homogeneous linear system corresponding to the system, and then we're going to be adding on an extra function, a particular solution. C1x1 plus C2x2 plus dot 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 plus Cnxn is the general solution to the homogeneous system x prime is equal to ptx. And Vt will be a particular solution to our differential equation. This week we're going to study four methods to solve a non-homogeneous linear system. First, we're going to talk about using diagonalization. I introduced this concept last week. We're going to use the method of undetermined coefficients. Think back to chapter three. We're going to be doing the same idea today. We're going to be using variation of parameters. Again, we've already talked about variation of parameters in chapter three when we looked at second order equations. We'll use the same ideas here for a linear system. And then finally, we're going to use the method of the V Laplace transform. First, let's talk about diagonalization. Because we're considering the non homogeneous linear system, x prime is equal to ax plus g, where a is a square constant matrix. We're going to suppose that our matrix is diagonalizable. G is just some function defined on an open interval. Xi1 up to Xi n are going to be the eigenvectors of capital A. And capital T will be the square matrix where the first column is the first eigenvector, second column is the second eigenvector, etc. Because the matrix is diagonalizable, we know that the eigenvectors must be linearly independent and therefore capital T must be an invertible matrix. And then we recall from our linear algebra course that T inverse AT will be a diagonal matrix, not just any diagonal matrix, but a diagonal matrix where the numbers on the main diagonal are the eigenvalues of A. There's a key step in the method of diagonalization. The key step is we always use the substitution y is equal to t inverse x. Every time we do our diagonalization, we're always going to do y is equal to t inverse x. Or to say this another way, x is equal to t y and if we substitute this into our linear system, on the left we have ty prime. t is a constant matrix, so that doesn't different. We don't differentiate t; we only differentiate the function y. And on the right we have ATY plus g. Divide or multiply both sides by t inverse. We get y. Prime is equal to t inverse ATY 
plus T inverse G. But remember, T inverse AT is a diagonal matrix, which we can call D. T inverse G is some different function I'm going to call H. Instead of solving the linear system that we started with, where we are going to solve y prime is equal to dy plus h, because y prime is equal to dy plus h is an easier linear system. Why is it easier? Because it's just the system y1 prime is equal to r1, y1 plus h1, y2 prime is equal to r2, y2 plus h2, etc. Notice that in the first equation, we only have the variables y1 and t. In the second equation, we only have the variables y2 and t, and so on. The final equation has only the variables yn and t. That means that we can solve these equations separately. We can just look at the first equation, it's just the first order linear equation, which we know how to solve. Then we can move on to the second equation. We can just look at the second equation, and just solve the second equation. We can solve these each of these equations individually. We know how to solve these. We looked at this in chapter two. The solution to each of these equations is given by the formula at the bottom of the page. And if we know y, then we can calculate x. Because x is just t multiplied by y. So the idea is we change our linear system into an easier system. We solve the easier system. And then we multiply by t to find the solution to the differential to the linear system that we started. Let's do two examples. Solve x prime is equal to minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, x, plus 2 e to the power of minus t, 3 t, or ax plus g. We need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this matrix. I'm just going to tell you that the eigenvalues are minus 3 and minus 1, and the eigenvectors are 1 minus 1 and 1. So we can write down t and d. t must be 1, 1, minus 1, 1. That's first column, first eigenvector, second column, second eigenvector. And I'll just tell you that the inverse of this matrix is a half, 1, minus 1, 1, 1. Here's the key step. Here's the step we always do when we use this method. Let y be t inverse. Then we can substitute into our equation. Instead of x prime is equal to ax plus 2 e to the power minus t 3t, we replace x by ty. And on the left, we have ty prime. And on the right, we have ay plus 2 e to the power minus t 3t. Or y prime is t inverse ay plus t inverse 2 e to the power minus t 3t. T in inverse AT is just D. Substitute in T inverse and calculate this. We have the diagonal matrix, minus 3, 0, 0, minus 1, and then multiplied by Y, and then plus the vector function, a half multiplied by 2 e to the power minus T, minus 3T, 2 e to the power minus T, plus 3T. So the linear system that we need to solve is y1 prime plus 3y1. I'm taking y1 over to the left, so it becomes plus. Is equal to the function e to the power of minus t minus 3 over 2. We know how to solve this. We did this in chapter 2. And then we have the second equation. y2 prime plus y2 is equal to e to the power of minus t plus 3 over 2 t. Again, we know how to solve this.
I'm just going to tell you the solutions to these. I'll leave this for you to check. Using the ideas from chapter two, these are the solutions to these two first order independent linear differential equations. As soon as we know solutions for y, we can multiply by t to find the answer to this question. Because x is equal to t multiplied by y. And this is the answer. We can just fit it on the page. A constant c1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 e to the power minus 3t plus a constant c2 multiplied by 1 1 e to the power minus t. And this looks right because it's eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t plus constant eigenvalue e to the power minus t. Good, that's what we want. And then plus the particular solution, which is a half, 1 minus 1 e to the power minus t plus 1 1 t e to the power minus t plus 1 2 t minus a third or 5. And a second example. Solve x prime is equal to 1, root 3, root 3 minus 1x, plus e to the power of t, root 3 e to the power of minus t. The idea is the same. We're going to diagonalize the matrix to turn this linear system into an easier linear system. We'll solve the easier linear system, and then we'll multiply it by t to find the answer to this linear system. We need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Here they are. And then we can write down the transition matrix T. <coughs> T inverse, we can calculate, and D. If we wanted to, we can calculate t inverse at, or we can just say, we know that this must be a diagonal matrix, and we must have the eigenvalues on the main diagonal. We could just write down that d is minus 2, 0, 0, 2. And then we do the key step. The key step is y is equal to t inverse a. This is the key idea behind the method of diagonalization. Then, and this time I'm skipping ahead, we don't need to do all the details each time. Then we know that our new equation must be y prime is equal to dy plus t inverse g. We know d, we just need to calculate t inverse g. And I'll leave this for you to check. Then we have a linear system of two independent first order linear equations. y1 prime plus 2y1 is equal to a quarter e to the power of t minus 3 quarters e to the power of minus t. And y2 prime minus 2y2 is equal to root 3 over 4 e to the power of t plus root 3 over 4 e to the power of minus t. You know how to solve these, so I'm just going to tell you the solutions. These are the solutions to these two differential equations. As soon as we know y, we can multiply by t to get x. x is equal to t multiplied by this vector y. And I'm not going to finish this question. You know how to multiply matrices together. So I'm just going to leave this example unfinished. So that was the method of diagonalization. We need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. We need the transition matrix T. And then we need to solve the new equation, y prime is equal to t 
dy plus t inverse g. After we solve that, we multiply by t to get the solution to the equation that we started. Method two is our method of undetermined coefficients. Again, we're going to be considering x prime is equal to ax plus g, where a is a square constant matrix. Do you remember what we did in chapter three? The idea is this. First, we find the general solution to the homogeneous equation. We're going to look at g, and we're going to make a guess with the constants, and then we're going to find the constants to get a particular solution. And then we're going to add these two together. We're going to do the function we found in one plus the function that we found in two. For example, solve x prime is equal to minus two one, one minus two x, plus two e to the power minus t, three t. I've already done this. This was the first example I did using the method of diagonalization. So we already know the answer to this, but now I'm going to solve it again in a different way. First, we need the solution to the homogeneous equation. As soon as we know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we can write this down. We need to find a particular solution. Because our function g is a vector, e to the power minus t, plus a vector multiplied by t, we're going to try this ansatz. Now let me go back. Look, we already have e to the power minus t in the solution to the homogeneous equation. So we can't just have e to the power t here. We're going to have to have, we're going to have to multiply by t. Instead of just guessing vector multiplied by e to the power minus t, I'm going to guess vector a, t e to the power minus t plus vector e to the power minus t. That's my guess to get the first part working. For the second function, we have a first order polynomial, t, vector multiplied by t. So my guess for the second one is going to be a first degree polynomial. That's some vector c multiplied by t plus some vector d. And let me just repeat, because minus 1 is an eigenvalue of our matrix, we can't just have e to the power minus t in our ansatz. We need to have both t e to the power minus t and e to the power minus t. Slightly different from chapter 3, where we would only have t e to the power minus t. Here we need to have t e to the minus t and e to the power minus t. So let's try this guess. Instead of x prime is equal to ax plus g, we have this long equation. a e to the power minus t minus a t e to the power minus t minus b e to the power minus t plus c, that's the derivative of x, is equal to capital A small a t e to the power minus t plus capital A b e to the power minus t plus capital A C T plus capital A D and then plus the function G plus two zero e to the power minus T plus zero three T. We need to find vectors A, B, C and D such that this equation is true for all T. First, I want to look at the terms including t e to the power minus t, which I've highlighted in orange. On the left, there's minus small a multiplied by t e to the power minus t. And on the right, I have capital A small a t e to the power minus t. So I must have that minus small a is equal to capital A a. 
In other words, we must have the small a is an eigenvector of the matrix. Small a must be of the form alpha alpha for some number alpha. We can't use any eigenvectors, it's one particular eigenvector. So far we know it must be the vector alpha alpha, but we don't know the value of alpha yet. We'll come back to that. Now let's look at the terms including e to the power minus t. On the left hand side I have an a and a minus b. On the right hand side I have capital A B and true zero. Rearranging this small a minus two zero, moving the two zero to the left is equal to a b plus b, moving this minus b over to the right. Small a we know is alpha alpha, so on the left we have alpha minus t alpha. Over on the right I have a plus i b or minus one one, one minus one b one b two which is minus b1 plus b2, b1 minus b2. What can we say here? Well, just here I have minus b1 plus b2, and on the second position I have plus b1 minus b2. The top line is equal to minus 1 multiplied by the bottom line. But the top line is alpha minus 2, and the bottom line is minus alpha. This tells us that I must have alpha is equal to 1. So the first vector, A, must be 1, 1. Then we know b1 minus b2 is equal to 1, so b must be of the form k, k minus 1. At this point, we could choose any value of k that we want. We don't need a particular k, because when we move on to the next term, we're not going to be involving b. So we can choose any k that we want. Choose an easy number. I choose k is equal to 0 to get the vector b is equal to 0 minus 1. Okay, we found A and we found B, now we need to find C and D. Let's look at the terms involving T. On the left side, there's no terms which are just involve T. On the right side, there's AC and 0, 3. That's quite easy. A is an invertible matrix, so we can find that C must be 1, 2. Then we just need to find D. We look at the terms involving the function 1. On the left side is C, and on the right side is A, D. We already know C, and A is an invertible matrix. So we can calculate that D must be A inverse C, or minus 4 thirds minus thirds. And that's the calculations that we need to do. Now we know A, B, C, D. Now we know the particular solution. Now that we know the particular solution, we can add it together to the general solution to find the solution to a different equation. And when you have time, you can check back and find this is exactly the same solution that we found using the method of diagonalization. One more example. Solve x prime is equal to 2341x plus e to the power t minus 10t minus
we need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. As soon as we know those, we can write down the general solution to the homogeneous linear system. I'll skip ahead because you know how to do this. Next, we need to find a particular solution to the homogeneous equation. So what we do is we... I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm splitting this up this time into smaller problems. This time I want to find a particular solution to the, the non-homogeneous system where the function is e to the power t and then zero on the bottom. We'll do the rest of the function later. Because one is not an eigenvector of this matrix, we just try the ansatz a e to the power t for some vector a. And then we can calculate that a1, a2, e to the power t must be equal to 2a1 plus 3a2 plus 1, 4a1 plus a2, e to the power t. The solution to this must be that a1 must be 0 and a2 must be minus a So that tells us our particular solution is 0 minus 1 third e to the power t. Again, I leave this for you to check later. Now I want to do the second part of the function. Let's suppose we have a function where the top number is 0 and the second coordinate is minus 10t minus 3. We need an ansatz because our function g is a first degree polynomial. Our ansatz is going to be a first degree polynomial. We're guessing that we have a t plus b for some vectors a and b. We put this into the, to the differential equation and we find a linear system for a1, a2, b1, and b2. We can solve this linear system to find these numbers. a must be 3 minus 2, and b must be 0. So we found our second particular solution, 3t, 1 minus 2t. Okay, that's all we need. Add these functions together, and we find the general solution to the non-homogeneous equation that we were given at the start. Our third method is the method of variational parameters. This time we're going to be considering x prime is equal to ptx plus gt, where now we're letting p be a, a matrix function. And we're going to suppose that there exists a fundamental matrix, capital Psi, for the homogeneous system x prime is equal to ptx. Last week we talked about how to write down fundamental matrices. This is not the special fundamental matrix capital Phi, this is just any fundamental matrix. Last week, we, we talked how the general solution to x prime is equal to ptx can be written as x is equal to the fundamental matrix psi of t multiplied by a constant vector c. The key idea in variational parameters is we're going to guess that the solution to the non-homogeneous system can be written as the, as the form capital psi t, and then instead of a constant vector c, a vector function u of t. Can we find the vector function u of t? Let's take this and we're going to put this into the differential equation. On the left side, x prime is the derivative of psi, u plus psi derivative of u, that's just a product rule. And on the right side, 
we have P psi U plus G. But there's a key thing to remember. Last week, I made a point of asking you to prove that if psi is a fundamental matrix for x prime to be x, then psi solves the same equation. Psi solves psi prime is equal to p psi. So look up what we have. I have a psi prime on the left and I have a p psi on the right. These two must cancel out. And we're left with psi u prime is equal to g. Or u prime is the inverse of the fundamental matrix multiplied by g. Or u is the integral of psi inverse g. That's the key formula. Multiply u by xi and we get our solution. So the idea is to solve x prime is equal to pdx plus g using the method of variational parameters. Step one, we need to find a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous linear system. And then we need to calculate xi, integral of psi inverse g. For example, solve x prime is equal to minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, x, plus 2e to the power minus t, 3t. Yes, it's this example again. This one was solved two times already. We're going to solve this a third time, and this won't be the last time we solve this today. The solution to the homogeneous equation is this. So we can write down a fundamental matrix. e to the power minus 3t minus e to the power minus 3t, e to the power minus t, e to the power minus t. Then we use the formula. We're going to need the inverse of this matrix, so let's calculate this using um, the way we always use to calculate the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. We need the integral of psi inverse g. This looks messy, but there's nothing difficult going on here. It's just, um, first of all, a matrix multiplied by a vector. We know how to do this. And then it's an integral of a vector. Integral of e to the power 2t, easy. Integral of t e to the power 3t, was quite easy, just integration by parts. Integral of 1, easy. And again, integral of 3 over 2 t e to the power t, yeah, that's easy. You know how to do this. Integration by parts, again. You can check that this is the answer. And then we're almost finished. We're going to multiply this function by the fundamental matrix, and we're going to get the solution to the homogeneous equation. We need to multiply this matrix by this vector. This is not difficult, but it's just perhaps time consuming, making sure we don't make a mistake. And we get the R answer. And, of course, this is the same answer that we got last time. Um, the time we got. So let me repeat myself. To use the method of variation of parameters, it's all about using this formula written in the blue box. We find the fundamental matrix of the homogeneous equation. We find its inverse. Put everything into this formula and do the work to calculate the answer. One more example. Solve x prime is equal to minus 4, 2, 2 minus 1 x, plus the vector function, t to the power minus 1, 2 t to the power minus 1 plus 4.
we need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. As soon as we know those, we can write down a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous system. We need the inverse of this matrix. We have our formula inverse of ABCD is 1 divided by the determinant, that's AD minus BC. D and A swap places, B and C get a minus sign on them. Using this formula, we can calculate that the inverse of the fundamental matrix is 1 fifth. Matrix 1, 2, minus 2 e to the power 5, T e to the power 8. Okay. We need xi inverse multiplied by g. Here's the calculation. Nothing too difficult here. Just, um, just a time-consuming calculation, perhaps. t to the power minus 1, that's 8 over 5. And then 4 over 5, e to the power 5t. We need to integrate this function, and this time it's actually an easy integral. Integral of t to the power minus 1, we know that. Integral of 8 over 5, very easy. Integral of 4 over 5, e to the power 5t, again, very easy. And then we multiply on the left by the fundamental matrix, and we get our answer. And the answer is this. That just leaves one method to talk about. The final method, final idea in this course is using the Laplace transform to solve non-homogeneous linear systems. First, some notation. If x is the vector x12 up to xn, then when I want the Laplace transform of this vector, I'm going to write this as capital X. And all I mean is it's the vector where in the first coordinate I have the B Laplace transform X1, then I have the Laplace transform X2, and so on. You will recall from chapter six that the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function satisfies this. Laplace transform y prime is s multiplied by the Laplace transform y minus y z. We have the same idea for vector functions. The Laplace transform x prime is equal to s multiplied by capital X minus x is 0. Easy to remember because it's basically the same equation. Why is this true? Because when we do the Laplace transform, we're doing the Laplace transform of each coordinate separately. We're taking the Laplace transform of the first coordinate, we're taking the Laplace transform of the second coordinate, and so on. So, of course, the same formula is true. Okay. Solve x prime is equal to minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, x, plus 2 e to the power minus e, 3 t. Yes, it's this equation again, but this time it's slightly easier. When we have a question about the Laplace transform, we almost always have an initial condition as well. In this case, I'm going to use the initial condition y of z, so x of 0 is equal to 0. We take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. On the left side, we have the V Laplace transform of x prime. In other words, on the left side, we have S capital X minus X at 0, which of course is just 0. 
On the right-hand side, we have A capital X plus capital G, where capital G is B plus transpose small g. So we have SI minus A multiplied by capital X is equal to G, or capital X is SI minus A inverse capital G, where the inverse of SI minus A, we can calculate like this. We're going to want to take the inverse of the plus of capital X to get our answer. We're going to want to take the inverse of plus transform of this function. And here I'm skipping over the details. We spent three weeks talking about the Laplace transform. We've talked about how to find inverse Laplace transforms of functions like this. I'm just going to leave this for you to check, or you can believe me that when we take the inverse Laplace transform of this, we get this function. Let's do one more example before we finish. Solve 2x prime plus y prime minus y minus t is equal to 0. x prime plus y prime minus t squared is equal to 0. With the initial conditions, x of 0 is 1, y of 0 is equal to 0. Now, it's going to be an extra step we have to do first of all, because look, we have x prime and y prime in both equations. We need to solve for x prime and y prime first. And I'm going to leave it for you to check that we can rearrange and solve these two differential equations. I mean, solve to find x prime and y prime. And write them in the form x prime is equal to y minus t squared plus t y prime is equal to minus y plus 2 squared, t squared minus t. If we write this in terms of vectors, then we're trying to solve x prime is 0, 1, 0, minus 1, x plus t e to the power t minus t squared, 2t squared minus t, with the initial condition that x of 0 is equal. What we do is we take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. On the after I take the Laplace transform and rearrange, and I leave this for you to check, I could write this as SI minus A capital X is equal to X of 0 plus capital G. That's S minus 1, 0 s plus 1 multiplied by capital X. That's an invertible matrix as long as s is not 0. Is equal to 1, 0 plus 1 over s squared minus 2 over s cubed, 4 over s cubed minus 1 over s squared. Solving this, we have a formula for capital X. I imagine you could do this. And then using partial fractions, we can split these two fractions up like this. I'm being quick on this part because I'm sure you could do this if you wanted to. And then we could find the inverse of plus transforms of these two functions. And then we're finished. We can write down the solution to the initial mode problem. The solution is 5 e to the power minus t minus 4 plus 5 t minus 2 t squared plus 1 third t cubed. And then minus 5 e to the power minus t plus 5 minus 5 t plus 2 t squared. 
And that's the end of this example. This week I've tried to focus on the new things and I've skipped through the calculations, which I think you should be able to do by now by yourself. And this is the end of your equations course. Are there any questions? The final exam will have three questions. Each question, you, for each question, you will be allowed 30 minutes. So, like the, the midterm exam, they will appear separately. First, you'll have the first question, and then 30 minutes later, the second question will appear. And in the system, it will appear as a separate test. And then, and after another 30, 30 minutes, the third question will appear. For each question, you, you need to solve the problem and show you're working. You need to write on a piece of paper, say, and then you need to upload a photograph or a scan of your paper. And I think I don't think I'm going to give much away by saying after the midterm exam, we've talked about the Laplace transform and we've talked about linear systems. So I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying one of these three questions will be about linear systems and one of these three questions will be about the Laplace transform. And one of these three questions will be on something from the first half of the course. You will only be able to upload one file. So if you want to use more than one page, then you will need to combine them together into one file. For example, there's many smartphone apps which will let you scan or photograph several pages and then just give you one PDF file. There's one called um, Scannable, there's one called Cam Scanner. Have a practice with that before the exam so you know how to 
use a smartphone app like that.